Resolder it. All right, we got a compressor replacement today. Um, I haven't done an acid test, I would like to, but unfortunately, we don't have the kit to do that. So, I was just tasked to swap this bad boy out and I'm gonna do the best I can. Got my compressor tote. Makes life so much easier. Got this box that Copeland sent with us. Some nice new plugs, fittings. This is all I'm going to use though. I want to prep this compressor as fast as possible. These just twist in pretty easily, which sucks is because they come out pretty easily as well. So we got all of our rubbers in. Only three of the four fell out, putting it in. I'm gonna put our bolts in. We're just gonna hand tighten these though until we get it soldered in. So on about three turns or so. This back one's gonna be the bitch. Yeah. This should be pressurized with nitrogen. Pull these plugs out. Ah. Yep. Hit the spot 
bottom one. And I'm gonna line everything back up. It's a nice tight fit right there. Carefully bend your line. Get my service ports through. We've got our nitrogen here. When we braze these fittings in, we want to put just a little bit of nitrogen in through while brazing to prevent oxidation. Now, don't go cranking it open just about one or two psi, or else the solder's not, or you're going to shoot the solder out. Actually use the regulator right there at about one psi steadily flowing through that's how we're gonna braze this bad boy Got this all soldered in. I'm gonna let this cool for a little bit, take a little break, and then come back and pressure test it. So we're nice and cool now. Got our gauges hooked up. I'm gonna open the regulator up. And I'm gonna preset it to 200 PSI. And then just let the gauges go. You can put your hand near your braze fittings to check for leaks. Grab your soap bubbles and then just soap bubble on the spots that you braze. All right, so we're still holding at 200 PSI, which is good. Just gonna undo the Nitrogen. I'm gonna let all the nitrogen out. Really doesn't matter what you do with it. All right, now we got all of our nitrogen out. So what I'm gonna do now, I do not have the ult optimal vacuum set up, but I'm gonna do a one hose vacuum, mainly because that's all I have right now is one vacuum hose. I'm not gonna use my gauges. I'm gonna put the Schrader in the liquid line side. I'm gonna grab my Micron gauge and a hose. Three ace vacuum hose right here. I've got my shutoff tool right here, Apion. hook that up to the suction side. The valve core is removed on the suction side. I'm gonna close this off, turn on my vacuum pump. Got our valve open here. Now we've got our micron gauge on the liquid line side. So when we're doing the vacuum, we are measuring the furthest point away from the vacuum. That's why the micron gauge is on the liquid side. We're gonna open our valve. So while you're uh, vacuuming, go ahead and hook everything back up. While I'm tightening down the compressor, Ricky's gonna replace the capacitor. I always replace the capacitor on a compressor change out and sometimes even the contactor. He's also gonna throw a new compressor plug in. 
remount your TXV bulb. Some people might call me a hack for installing the bulb with zip ties, but that's fine. I've never had any issues with it. Just make sure you don't use cheap zip ties and use a bunch of them. Since the TXV bulb is not in the air handler part where the fan is, where the cooling's taking place, I am going to insulate it as seen right here. Hook a reversing valve back up. So I'm having a hard time uh, bringing the liquid side down. Um, it won't go below a thousand microns. Suction side will go down. The TXV is giving it problems. So I'm gonna have to pull from both sides. This is not the optimal setup. I hate not having the right tools for the job, but I'm gonna do what we gotta do to get this vacuum properly. So I've got another core removal tool over here. And I've got a shut off right here. It's got all my valves closed. Turn on the vacuum pump. And we're gonna open our valves on both sides. Closing down on the liquid port, closing down on the suction port. Shut it off right here. And then I'm gonna check the rise on my micron gauge. We're at 975 microns. It's been about 30 minutes. I'm gonna go ahead and break this vacuum. I'm gonna vent the... I'm gonna turn my vacuum pump on after I broke it with uh, just a tad bit of nitrogen. That's just to get any, any droplets of moisture that are still in there, which I still believe because it did rise about 400 microns over 30 minutes. So I'm gonna open these valves back up. And then let it vacuum for a little bit longer. This is gonna be the second sweep. Below 500 microns again shut the valves off and break vacuum one more time all right we broke vacuum all right we are below 500 microns again i've got this is our third sweep i've got my gauge hooked up i've got my refrigerant ready to go on my scale we are gonna shut this vacuum pump off and break vacuum to charge this unit, I'm gonna put as much as I can in. It's uh, 84 ounces, there's no line set, so it's very easy to charge if you have a scale. Going to reinsert the valve cores. I was able to get 1.38 pounds into the system without it running, but I'm gonna button this up and go install it and finish the charging upstairs. All right, you can pull. 